Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My friends, um, today I just want to share from John chapter 8, verses 3 through 7. And actually, it's interesting because I'm trying to read a different um, translation every time I read the Bible just to get different perspectives and um, whatever. So I had ordered this and I've, and I've been looking for ones that are out of print um, more than, uh, different translations for, like, our times, I don't know, uh, I prefer that <laughs> they would be older, that's just, I don't know, I just don't trust what's going on these days, anyways, that's, that's just me, so, anyways, so, I've been reading, and I just realized that I read chapter 8, I'm, because I'm in the Gospel of John, and they didn't even have this passage in the in the Bible, it actually didn't even start till verse thirteen, and um, there's people that say you know that this should this was this was added later on, um, but and and they don't trust the you know historical context of it or or if it's if it was just added or if it's a story, but um, but to me, it, it's powerful and maybe it just. It might have gotten added later, but I don't think it meant that it wasn't something that really happened. Um, that's my personal opinion, just because of how powerful it is. So let's start. John 8, verse 3. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us, that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as if he did not hear them. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. <laughs> He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And I think that it's important that we understand that, you know, the law brings judgment. And and we're going to see things in the word. And then we're going to be able to see things in other people's lives. And our first instinctive response is going to be to condemn them because they're living contrary to what the word says. But it's important, so important to look at what Jesus says right here. Whoever's without sin among you, let them cast the first stone. Like we have to remember what God spared us from, what God has brought us out of. We can't look at someone else's sin and think that our sin is any better than theirs. Just because maybe we've never committed adultery, um, it doesn't make us any better than the person who committed adultery, right? Uh, just because I've I've never um, stolen or or which I have stolen. I mean, you know, I've I've done all these things. I mean, I don't think I've ever committed adultery. But according to Jesus, if you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. So if we think about the standards that Jesus set, uh, if you call someone a fool, you've committed murder. If you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. If we look at it from the standard that Jesus has set, we should realize that none of us has the right to judge or condemn another. And even God says, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So we must understand that if we're judging people and condemning people and looking down upon them because of sin in their life, that's not Christ in us. That's the enemy. That's the accuser of the brethren because there's hope for every person, as long as they're alive, to turn to the Lord, and we should hope for their best. And we should hope that they turn. The next time you think about condemning someone, you should 
pray for that person instead and hope that, hey, whatever's going on with them could get turned around. And have you ever invited them to church or, or told them about Jesus or told them about what Jesus has spared you from? We must not forget what the Lord has done in our lives. I've been blessed because my life was so jacked up that I don't judge people <laughs> because I know what I've been saved from and spared from. But I feel sorry for the people who think that they they haven't been saved and spared from that much. Like they actually think that they were living pretty good lives and they're pretty good people because those are the people that are in the worst danger of judgment so let's all know that any sin is worthy of death the consequences of sin is death whether it's adultery murder lying stealing uh the the smallest things you know that are contrary to god's law are worthy of death so and if you offend in one you offend and all. So let's not condemn anybody because you only condemn yourself. Amen.